Okay, folks, welcome back to another episode of Programming with Clayton. Today, we're going to go over those quirky DF1 drivers, and we're going to configure an IP address on a compact logic using RS Links Classic and a DF1 driver. So, first thing, I know, I know everybody these days, we have a lot of problems with DF1 drivers. Um, main thing is because we're using VMware, we're using virtual machines, we're having to connect serial ports through a VM to your host machine. And on top of that, most, most PCs these days don't have a serial port. So it just, it just really makes it a pain. So today we're going to run, few, a couple, run through a couple of things. First off, uh, we're going to go ahead and just look at, we're going to open up RS Links. Okay. Here's what your home page looks like on RS Links. We're going to go to the top up here to Communications, and we're going to click on Configure Drivers. Okay, when we configure drivers, we pop up, we see we default, we have the Ethernet IP running. We have that driver configured and running. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to click on Available Drivers, and here's all the drivers that are available to you to configure to talk to something with RS Links. We're going to use the RS-232 DF1 devices. And we're going to click Add New. At that point, it's going to give you a name, whatever you want to name it. This particular driver, I like to leave mine in the default, the ABDF1. And I'm going to click OK. OK, when it comes up to this screen, if you know what your serial port settings are on your device, if you've communicated with this device before before you can go ahead and add all that in uh, to me it's a lot easier to use the auto configure if you'll notice it defaults to com port one now depending on what you're using and everything else it might be com one for me i have to go to vm removable dev removable devices and if i look i see i'm using serial port two and i'm connected okay so I need to change this to COM2, and if you'll notice on the device, it defaults to PLC channel 0. Okay, that's the old slicks. You know, the, we're not connecting to a slick today, we're actually click, connecting to a compact logic. So let's go ahead and pop this window down, and we're going to scroll down to Logic's 5550 compact logic. Okay, when we do that, we're going to go down here and we're going to click Auto Configure. And this thing is going to run through the baud rates until it figures out what baud rate the device is that you're communing to, communicating to. Okay, auto, auto configuration successful. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and click OK. We have our COM2, our DF1 driver running. We're just going to go ahead and close this window. Okay, now we're going to highlight our ABDF1 driver right here. Okay, we can see it's scanning. And we can see it's picked up my L32E. We're going to double click on that and double click it again to the back plane. And we'll click double click one more time. Now it pops up everything that's on my back plane. It shows the processor, my Ethernet card, which is built into the processor, and I've also got a scanner card, a device net scanner card that pops up. If we click on the Ethernet port and we right click and go to module configuration, <clears throat> it takes a little while sometimes. So, okay, now our, our Ethernet port configuration window has popped up. It shows no faults. It shows the, res the revision and everything else. Let's go ahead and click on port configuration. Here we go. It, see, it shows I don't have an IP address set. It's set to use boot P like we learned in the last video. Let's go ahead and make this static. Okay, when we click on static, we can now add our IP address that we want. 
and we'll go ahead and add the subnet mask also. I don't have a gateway or anything else. I want to auto negotiate. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Down here at the bottom it says network interface not configured. That's something else too to, to notice. Click apply. It's going to tell me that you know it could change some problems on my, my process. That's okay. And it's downloading the configuration now through the serial link, through the DF1 driver. Okay, now we're, we've configured. It's applied. We'll click OK. It still says, you know, hey, this could, pr this could interrupt a process. It's okay. Now let's just open up a command prompt real quick. And let's see if we can ping that device now. And there it is. So let's go ahead and we'll also pull up uh, our Logix 5000. We'll go to Communications, Who Active, and we should be able to find our PLC now and go online with it. There we go. There it is. There's my processor right there. We'll click Go Online. And there we go. I don't have a program in there right now, so we, we'll just go ahead and download it. Yes. We won't put it back in remote run. Now if we scroll down here to our Ethernet port and click Properties, Port Configuration, as you can see the boot, pay, boot P has been unchecked. We've got an IP address and a subnet mask. It's that simple, folks. Once again, thank you for joining in to another episode of Programming with Clayton.